When women speak. And New Jersey Poetry Events presents. When people speak. speak. Poetry and, and conversation, conversation. With pop up poetry guests. Your host will be Amira Shabazz Balau. And your co host, James C. Ellerby. Uh, but it's not over because <laughs> we have the main ingredient. We have the main course now. Um, and I'm happy that you're right here and you stayed with us because you're the next feature. And I want to say, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a go old school. And you'll, you know, when I go in, you'll understand. Um, when I used to host... Um, blazing the mic and Carteret. I used to always love to give, you know, a heart to heart, my own feelings about, you know, the feature for the night. And I'm taking it back there. Um, Amira, Amira Shabazz Balau. Um, there's certain people or certain poets that their message, their voice is so necessary in any time. And Amira, you're one of those voices. Wow. Your words are so powerful. Your words tell the story of the average person, the person that society doesn't see, but you see. You are a modern day griot. And keep writing because your type of poetry saves lives. Your type of poetry, you know, gives us a, a better look at the horrors and the joys of life. And we need that in words. We need to be reminded of that. And um I mean, Amira is a teacher um, in the Newark Public School um, system. She is a wife, mm. mother, a poet, an activist, an author, and just someone that I am so glad to call a friend most out of all those things. Um, help me bring to this stage the one, the only, Amira Shabazz Balau. Wow, what an introduction from a very good friend and my co-host of When People Speak. Um, I'm last on, on the bill, but I'm going to try to tell a few stories. Um, this is Women's History Month, so I'm going to try to speak through various women that I either am or I know or I have come to know. I'm gonna start out with, she was beautiful. She, she was beautiful. She was beautiful and the universe knew her, but she didn't know her. Her smiles were kissed and refreshed by the dawn and the mere evanescence of her smile created for others their crowns. As if her royal grin knighted them and her voice, her voice was whispered by melodies and her eyes charming ovals of pure onyx, pure precious jewels. She didn't know. She did not know she was beautiful. Although her actions, her actions from the heart were always kind and generous and gentle, unleashing desire. Some shared her wisdom and others, and others admired the droplets of faith released to us all. And you know, you know her beauty is not skin deep. No, not in this case, it's shared unselfishly whenever she enters a space, taking her throne, bowing her head, straightening her dreads, curls, fro, or whatever be on her head. She simply whispered, 
I am a melanated queen. And no matter what my shade, what may be anything, it may be anything in the cocoa range and it permits me to shine. And I don't intend to leave any of you queens behind. So take your rightful places and shine. This, this is our royal right no longer a mystery of the night. Beauty, beauty is invincible, unownable, made to relish and share. They need us to stare. They need us. We are, we are beautiful. She, she yelled out of windows just before twilight. It was the only way they, they would hear her. They could hear her. Ears were tuned to mama's voice no matter where. He wanted that, their glare. So she yelled and she yelled and she watched the moon children with no pressure. Watch the planet, watch the planet's rotation. Learn to measure children. Be a part of your own elevation. Learn who you be as master, as master planted his feet long ago to keep you so you'd never know. You have the power to replant and grow as a flower. You, you are a metaphor to none. There are none like you. There are none, there are none as you be. You dream and spit up hyperboles of your own heartbeat for others to actually feel without touch. You would collapse daily. We need no pressure to know pain and poverty really perpetually, systematically. So his legacy was to teach, was to teach and to preach and to preach and to carry others through his speech, pure poetry. Let the solace of the dream light your path and offer you more, more than gunfire noises, more than useless commodities and, and worn out toys. The laws, the laws in motion, they judged us long before we crossed oceans. They gave us famine. We spit up the will to learn and earn and offer this universe and we gave back nothing nothing but peace. So rely on the release, she screamed out of windows, knowing they would hear and in between and catch a girl and kiss a girl and kick the can and hide and seek, they'd hear. He'd know they'd get in. This life just ain't for the meek. She wanted to know them. She wanted them to know. Let your words be your swords upon their souls. Gift them with your knowledge. Your poems be college. Your poems be equality. Your poems are from above. Your poems are truly love. Be a poet in spirit. Blow breaths of awakeness into hearts. Transform yourself. Spirits are formless gases seep into nostrils, feed hearts and brains, let words, let words, let words and sentences, revelations drop from your pen's tongue, puncture, yell from windows at dust too, they will hear you, do like mamas do, scream from windows at dusk, call them children back to you. Ah, I. I I, I the rebel soul am burning. I'm singed to my soul with the anger and frustration of being a darker but lighter womb man. I'm angry with my spirit for being fooled into complacency. I want to stomp somebody out. I want to stomp somebody out in the death of my real conscience. I need to be unborn, then reborn into a new flesh. Let it be black. Let it be black, blackity, 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 blacker than whatever anyone has ever seen. I feel cheated. I have no place to be. Africa don't want me. Once upon a time, I was in a good grace, a good space, my skin high yellow. And she, she sang songs about me. And I think, I think they called me Seraphona, I think and the black honey bees in their desire not to end up like 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 Emmett whistling went way wrong he desired me with his baby boy blue jeans ruined me when i wasn't as it turned out to be snow white but but i i i hate that i don't have a place when i stepped off earth into the midst of the motherland their breath let me know i don't really breathe deep enough their strong strides let me know. I don't walk straight enough or firmly enough cause it ain't my soil. She sang about me, you know. 
She sang about me, cursing me, cussing me out of existence. But but after they done, after they done, after they are done, don't you know a tree is still planted with roots deep for me? Roots deep for me? Me too? You know, you know it's a new dawn, it's a new day for me, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling woo, as black as I can be, proud to be, proud to be, oh yeah. I got black lash blues, still being angry, still being blue, still being full of fuel. Stop me. I'm gonna kill somebody. And when I do, and when I do, I'ma, I'ma, I'ma be through when I say, Aunt Sarah, this, this, this is for you. I'll be off that sweet thing, kind of rough stuff, back in the body, back in the body, cause, cause I fight, I fight to my death, cause I be, I be, I be peaches. When leaving ain't really leaving, I look back after hearing you talk smack. When leaving ain't really leaving. I smile at words that cause my heart to swerve and crack cause you don't really mean it, do you? When leaving ain't really leaving, I'll smile through eyes that hide pain badly. When leaving ain't really leaving, I'll say I love you too. Throw back cusses that thrown, thrown, thrown from you, I'll leave. When leaving ain't really leaving, smile is on reverse, ears really hear, words that cut now cause me to swear. When they used to bring me tears, broken heart pieces collected, piled into pocket threads, eyes are able to shed tears, and, and my mascara, my mascara now smears. Pain turned up reality, guess I'm gone, guess I'm gone, guess I'm gone, when leaving, it's finally leaving, buried deep down somewhere I find me. I found it. It's my freedom song. When leaving is finally leaving, when leaving is finally leaving, I'll be gone. I'll be gone. This one's for George's mama. This one's for Brianna's mama. Trayvon's mama, Atiana's mama, Aura's mama, Stephanie's mama, Michelle's mama, Freddie's mama, Eric's mama, Sandra's mama. And this one's for me. He disappeared in time, lost to memories, beating down my heart. Can't you hear them? Beat, beat. Beat and they keep rhythm with the heat, the heat of my fury. Burned inside when I think, when I think, when I feel, while I know you saw it happen and you said nothing. He is not saved from translucency, marginal, dissipating heart murmurs that will mean nothing. It will mean nothing when the balloons deflate in the ribbon banner shred and fly dirty across skies and lands and lands like, like Bergen Street and Hawthorne Ave and Elizabeth Ave and the islands of faith, hope and tears, like, like places explored and conquered, floating and stopping life for passers by, souls bound to meet breaths themselves as they tap and tear with each day passing, rubbing like erasers and grabbing you from hearts and minds of everyone except mine. I simply love you forever and this is longer than any memory. Through salted tears which leave me dehydrated from life and deaths of the unlived, through, through the guilt I bear knowing not if I could have saved you. Yes, I could have pulled back on your coattails as you were panged and pulled to answer the call of night howls of corners which will soon be masqueraded and decorated shrines which invite others to join them. Where? where we allow hanging candles of homies and mamas and friends, which act like lighted tombs for the souls they grabbed and imprisoned with tears and sadness and sneakers and sneakers and sneakers, now soulless, void of people. I see shadows, cast it void of men, just shadows left behind, but we, we stare through the cracks in our faces, which match the cracks on the grounds, bruised with liquid, some salty, some clouded, others red and thick, both are tears though. They, they will attend your funeral and wear white or red or blue colors, 
They will blend in like knotted limbs on sweaters hidden, but seen until one flicker of a black light exposes them to the night and burns them like the reality they make barren mothers feel and scream out into the night for sons lost and hate and hate will scream for freedom and revenge. They hold hands of bloodlines like it's love and family, kissing foreheads and rubbing tears, tattoos on cheeks, just before, just before eyes slanted, soon to shut as well, but not limited to just being blood. Destined minds as they return to dust and dirt, sustained and stained with life and watered with mother's tears, wishing and praying for more time, screaming, praying for no more of this leaving only short thoughts of how you used to do and how you would be and all wearing white tees in solidarity, except for mom, her color be black, her initiation into her clown, her hazing, her hazing be pain forever. And I can tell you though, I can tell you even if your earthly existence, your earthly life was pure, hell is a place. Barren, sunless mothers live there, wishing the soles of sneakers on power lines, dripping and watering the concrete below, and knowing and wishing you know our realities too. Not all boys go to heaven. Some lie on streets waiting for words to speak and hands and feet to stomp out lunacy. The thinking, the woke, the knowing, all boys deserve life and a mother's plea, give us free. I wanna bellow. I wanna stand here and bellow names. I want to, in a surreal sort of way, pay tribute to the fallen, not the fallen to violence of the street, not the fallen to the violence of the street wars, but the fallen of pandemic blues, pandemic hard breaths, pandemic nobody coming to see you, pandemic like blowing kisses through glass, pandemic like tubes and blowing and pressing sounds of breathing apparatus blues, body bags and freezer trucks full, morgue schedules. I wanna, I wanna bellow. I want to go to your funeral and say my finals properly. I want to bellow. I want to feel like I want to say your name. No vaccine. I want to bellow. I want to say your name. Kiss you through mass and without mass. Just let it. Just let it. Just let it. Just make it last. I want to bellow. I want to say your name without quarantining my voice for 14 days into forever because you, you are not here. I want to say your name. You die without my touch. I want to say your name. I want to bellow. I want to say your name into tomorrow and believe and believe you were not alone because our souls touched and traveled and loved and lived and died as one. I want to bellow. I want to bellow because when you said I can't breathe, it meant more than a lung disease. Sometimes it meant somebody's knees. I want to bellow. When you said I can't breathe and politics and politics overruled your ability to receive, achieve, breathe and have more life. Let the rivers run free until we do. Following red bloods of our sins, our hopes, our threads of living like we, we are human too. Let the ears be covered not to hear and mask the heart from more lies and fears. Let the sight not be regained until pain has had it rain. Should we paint our doorsteps with red blood like Passover blues, may we hang our masks, but not in surrender, but to remember. Remember our tribal muse, my God, I want to bellow. Let us remember his names. Let us let us remember their names. Let us remember their names. Let us remember their names and bellow. I want to bellow. Thank you, Zee. Oh, man. You said, oh, my goodness. The piece before you said not all boys go to heaven some lie on the street and then you in in this piece you said when you said i can't breathe it was more than a lung disease what like whew. 
this is what I'm talking about. Like your words are just the the images, the analogies that you use throughout your poems are just incredible and they're so vivid and it, you transport us right there in that moment and and to experience everything about it you know and it, it's it's no wonder that you're I didn't mention that you're also a photographer but mm -hmm. the way that you put words together is like you're behind that lens and you're capturing the moment you know the, those those moments that a lot of people miss and may try to forget you remember and you make us remember. And that's what I love about your work. Um, let's talk about your book. Uh, I didn't mention it you know, in my personal bio. Oh, don't worry, I got you covered, sis. I got you covered. <laughs> it's always nearby. <laughs> We're gonna um, pull this up. Yeah, this is your book, Breathing Through Concrete. First of all, Tell the people the concept of this book and how you even came up with the title itself. Because, well, I'll just let you speak and then I can <laughs> chime in and give my feedback. Okay, great. Yeah, the book Breathing Through Concrete is an anthology of poems um, where if you travel from the beginning to the end, it, it tells a complete story. And it's almost as if you're looking at the life of a person, but you're really looking at the lives of people because they're composites of many children, many um, uh, semi-adults. I call them semi-adults because they probably never really reached full adulthood because of the diseases that they carried. And the disease that they carried were the diseases of the street. And they passed that down to children and gave children such hard lives to live, some that we really can't even understand the things that they are confronted with, that we expect them to behave in normal manners. Um, and I'm speaking from the guise of a teacher now looking out into a classroom of faces and wondering why Johnny can't learn, why um, Annabelle can't sit still, and why maybe Mark is so disrespectful. Um, the things that they have, the challenges, I should say, that they have to uh, face every day um, is what make up breathing through through concrete. It, it starts at the womb, um, life itself, and travels through life, and it ends. The final poem is about um, collecting the pieces of what was left over um, through lives that were not always easy, and thus the title, Breathing Through Concrete, because if you made it from the beginning to the end, you're still breathing. It was a tough breathe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, like, let me pull up some uh, quotes here. How, how did you come to poetry? Or shall mm -hmm. I say, how did poetry choose you? Um, okay. I, I don't think I ever... You never asked that? <laughs> I don't think I ever asked that or, you know, and I was always curious. Like we all, you know, as poets, we all have our journey. And I'm, I'm curious to know like when your journey started with poetry. Okay, so this is, it's gonna be some fun in this one. Okay, so like really, I, I really wasn't a poet, I was a writer, a secret writer, let's put it that way. Like I, I wrote and I, my mom knew that um, one day I was eventually gonna write a book, which by the way, has never been written yet. Um, and so as a teacher, I used to put on productions, still do, put on productions with children. And I was the facilitator of children's um, workshops with poetry and having them perform their poetry and um, getting their nerve up and, and pushing them up and making sure that they got their 15 minutes of fame. And some of them were innately geniuses. And um, that book was still on, a, on the back burner. So a friend of mine, and she's probably in the audience, I saw her here earlier, um, we started going to poetry shows um, just because we enjoy poetry. And a couple of family members were also poets. And, you know, I kind of pushed them out there and told them to take the stage because I read their stuff and they were good. But I never took the stage. Um, and this friend, we used to go to spots and I finally, we finally said, okay, the next show we go to, we're getting up there because I know you write and you know I write and we're just going to do this. Mm -hmm. Scared to death. So we did it. We went to a poetry show, had our poems ready. And of course, I'm, I'm, I've never been a memorizer. So I'm going to just put that out there. My poem was in my pocketbook. And as the night went on, the poem became shreds of 
crumpled up paper stuffed back in the pocket book and we left because neither one of us had the nerve to get up on the stage because we were so shy and so afraid. And one of the things that people don't realize when they talk about public speaking, public speaking is known to be one of the scariest things a person would ever have to do, but it's nowhere near being a poet. And mm -hmm. I say that because when you are a poet, you are sharing parts of you. And it is so personal sometimes, well, all the time, whether you're talking about um, not so happy times in your own life or whether you're describing uh, pieces of other people's lives, it's, it's a personal thing. And the last thing you want is for someone not to like your work. Mm -hmm. um, you want to share it. You want people to hear it. You want people to relate to it. But the last thing you want is for somebody to critique you and critique you when you're not ready, when you're not sure of yourself. So um, just to make sure that I answered your question, um, after producing um, several several shows of poetry and after publishing many, many, many children, um, I guess it was my time to actually um, start my own journey, you know, and I started visiting um, various uh, poetry venues and yours being one of them. I was a regular there. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanna say that that kind of helped me uh, get the courage to step up on the stage, begin reading my own work. And um, ever since then, I've been out here. See, um, within your answer, um, now it's making sense. Um, when, I'm, when I'm reading your book, um, it reads like a narrative. It reads like a, a full-fledged novel. I mean, look at, look at this. A guy steps out from his stroll with a pole holding a sign deep in his grind, it read, I'm selling good karma. I shrug and drop a coin, hoping to buy some for me and him, mostly me, wandering, wondering always, how could this be? I mean, like, that's, that's, that's a novel. <laughs> you know, the, like, I mean, and that's what I love about your book. Um, I mean, there's so many, um, so many lines that just sticks out and you say, oh, I know what she's talking about. Oh, I, you know, I've been there or, you know, oh, I know that person. That's a family member. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you really have a way of telling people's story. And I, that's why I asked you, you know, like, you know, cause like when I'm reading your book, um, you know, it's clear that you are a writer and uh, you know, it, it's just phenomenal. I mean, here's another one. I left a place where a lady hung low, kissing the ground while her kids hung around what dope of a trade would have her degrade herself? Lifeless, selfless yet selfish, kids left for doom, shouting out like sonic booms. Damn girl, that ain't your hair, and he ain't your daddy, and never was. Like, I mean, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you just take us right there. You know, and your whole book is like that. Um, I want to ask, like, through this whole experience, you being a self-published author, what is, like, one experience that you'll never forget? Um, okay, so I, I, I got to go back to just, and I'm, I'm speaking to people who, who happen to still be with us on this broadcast. The one experience that I, I I will never forget was realizing my voice, mm. accepting my voice. Mm. Mm -hmm. The day that I was able to take that label, I am a poet and make it mine was the day of rebirth for me. Mm. And those of you, you're one of them, people that knew me when you first met me, let's put it that way, until today, you're trying to figure out, well, where'd she come from? 
<laughs> it was <laughs> it was because I was always there, but I was afraid to accept that title, that voice, mm -hmm. that God given thing, and just just accept it and walk with it in truth. So mm -hmm. that's what I'll remember most, and that's what I'll try to impart on individuals that I work with, that I coach, that I facilitate. Just be honest with yourself and be gracious. And I think Re uh, Rescue said it uh, earlier this evening too. Um, a couple of the women said it. Um, just just honor yourself. Mm -hmm. Honor yourself and, and be grateful to God. You know, we call him a law. Be grateful because we all have that gift. We all have something. And the beauty is finding it mm. and accepting it. Absolutely. And growing it, you know. So once you have that, you know, all bets are off. <laughs> Let's put it that way. That's that's so true. Like I always tell people there's when you write poetry and when you finally realize that you're a poet, you know, those are two separate experiences. And um, you definitely uh, express that very eloquently. eloquently. Well, one of my friends, I have a, f a close friend that I'm always bouncing things off of, and she knows that I have this fear as well. And I guess it's no longer going to be a fear if I'm telling everybody out there that with the art, with the, all the galleries that I've been invited to, um, all the, the showings, all the poetry shows, somewhere deep down inside this this fear that somebody one day is going to say, who is that woman? You don't belong here. Mm. <laughs> I work hard, extra hard, and so do you. I want to um, just give you your kudos as well. Um, he's probably the hardest working man um, out there in the poetry scene and elsewhere. But I work very hard to not have um, a heckler jump up and say, you don't belong here. Mm. So, yeah, that's a fear. I actually had an experience like that. They didn't do it uh, while I was performing, thank God. But um I came out, a matter of fact, in New York, and um, mm -hmm. I overheard some hecklers. Um, and um, but it lit a fire in me um, because I never want to ever. Um, not saying that. I mean, if people are gonna, you know, they either gonna like your work or you're not. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Not, you know that you know your work is not for them, but. Um, I never want to feel that powerlessness when um, I overheard them because it gave, it put self doubt um, in me at the time. But when I realized, no, I had something to say, it lit a fire in me, and um, I never felt that way again. I don't focus on the hecklers; I focus on the people, and it, whether it be one person that says, "You know what? You said something that mattered to me," you know. Yeah. That, hey, that's worth anything. Um, what yeah. what has poetry done for your life that nothing else um, did? Um, there's an excitement here that that I have that has been unmatched anywhere else. Hmm. The thrill of just capturing a story where you're able to relate that story back to other people in a way that it's gut wrenching. Like it's superficial until somebody makes you draw attention to it. Right. Um, like the children, like the fact in one of those poems where the mother comes to the school and calls the girl through the, okay, we all could have seen or witnessed that. But when I tell the story of how, that obviously made that girl feel and what it led that girl to become. Um, the magic in when I open my eyes during a recitation of one of these pieces and I see somebody holding their heart or digging in their bag for a tissue, um, that gives me such an inspiration to go back and and, and and, and dig out more stories. This is a bunch of stories in, in heads, in my head and in my pocketbook on tissues on the back of 3000 notebooks where I probably can't even find half of them, half a poem here, half a poem there. Um, yeah. So 
this does that for me. It's it's therapy. Um, it, it's a release of energy. It's the inhale of energy as well. It's a substance. You know, you you can be sustained by it. Um, you can also uh, emerge yourself into a community of other people who are like you. Because if I say to my normal <laughs> friends, non-poet non friends, some of the things that go through my mind, they're looking at me, but I know that other poets have these visions, you know, these words that, that keep them up at night and make it hard to go to sleep and wake you up in the pre-dawn hours. I got this whole poem in my head and if I don't get out of bed right now and write it down, it's gonna be gone. And I've lost so many beautiful pieces like that and so have you. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a life force. I, I guess that's the answer. It's a life force. Mm, indeed, it, it truly is, truly is. Yeah, so that's what it does for me. And, you know, telling stories and telling stories that people can relate to, I for me, there's no better feeling. And it's not just the poetry. It's also the the images. Like, if I'm snapping a picture, I'm not snapping a picture so I can say, yo, James, I got your picture. Each picture is a thought, a moment in time that tells a complete story without one word. Mm. So I guess that's what I am, a storyteller. Mm -hmm. You know, a griot, whether it be through poetry or be through the artwork, um, that's, what it, that's what it's evolved to. I mean, that's who I am today. Don't ask me who I'm gonna be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I envision myself with this, this scroll, right? All the things that I am, all the things that I've been, all the things that I will be, and rolling it out and just putting my finger anywhere on the scroll saying, that's what I am today, and going with it. So, yeah, poetry is kind of a world that allows you to um, work out your feelings, work out. It's therapy. It gives you life. Sure does. Sure does. So, What's next for Mira in terms of poetry? Is there any um, project or writing period? Um, is there any projects mm -hmm. uh, that is in the works that you can share um, possibly? Yeah, know? I wanna help people. So, and that's always been my focus. And helping doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean the same thing to everybody. For me, it's helping women emerge from shells, from, from shells, meaning like deep within there's a person and if there's somebody that could back that that person emotionally, um, spiritually, and give that person a place, just like I found the place, help them to realize what their voice is, that's the person I want to be in kindness. Um, so I'm working on an anthology and it'll be called When Women Speak Anthology. And I'm going to be soliciting for submissions of every kind of woman who would like to be published may not be able to um, compile a, a grouping of, of their own work, um, but they can be a part of an anthology where they enter one or two pieces and it becomes a collection. Um, so that's one thing that I'm doing. I'm going to be published. I'm working on being published again, but this is this will be the fourth time. Thank God it's moving along. And um, I'm also April 10th when Women Speak will be um, um, uh, hosted at the New York and Cafe. So that, that's one of, another uh, dream that a lot of poets, you know, they want to be at the New York the famous New York Um, So that's coming up. Um, and just growing when women speaks platform and when people speaks platform to a place where it becomes a household name. Um, and it becomes what we call in Islam, halal entertainment, meaning it's adult entertainment, um, where you're 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 speaking to the intellect of a person and not the surface, so I'm I'm hoping to um, grow that from when women speak. So those are immediate projects, and you and I have talked about a bunch of things like a. Well, I don't want to put that on, out on Facebook because next thing I know, someone else will do it and we'll be like, "Hey, <laughs> that was our idea." <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, even uh, very successful people will always tell you, you know, be careful. Um, yeah you're sharing your dreams you know with everybody because not everybody is supporting your dreams <laughs> some of them can be thieves i think i might want to try a monologue i just have to get my my um what do you call it 
I'm afraid. So I, you know, I would like to try a monologue. Of, I just, of, of I just, work. Like, like even the, the previous quote that I read from um, Breathing Through Concrete, I mean, you have this constant dialogue, you know, and you can definitely, I can see that you representing these characters um, mm -hmm. because, you know, they're, they're, they're what you see They're you know, and yeah, I see that. I actually see that in your future. You know, yeah. well, if I have a moment, I'd like to shout out some of my really, really good supportive friends out there that um, like your friends see you when you don't see you mm. and friends in terms of family, as well as people that are not blood related, that those people who I call and we talk for hours and they say, oh, Amira, try this or, you know, that wasn't this that great. Let's let's move it around here. Um, I like to shout those people out. Um, I don't want to name names. I might forget somebody. Um, I want to shout out everybody who's made when people speak and when women speak a success by being repeat offenders coming back, whether you're a performer or whether you're in the audience. We see you. We see you and we appreciate you. And thank you for letting us know that this program and its sister program are programs that you want piped into your homes because we're getting back to realness here. We're getting back to realness here. We're going to um, nurture the soul. We're going to nurture the intellect. And we're going to let words have the power that words should have. You know, like the freedom to just speak and, and be a revolutionist if you want to, a, re a revolutionary person, be an activist if you want to, be a teacher if you want to, be a lover if you want to. You know, you take on whatever hat you want, but make it something of conscious effort and not the usual I see, I follow you know, be yourself, find your space. I, I'm, I'm thanking all of you out there for helping us to understand that what we're doing is definitely um, on the right road. And yes, Enzima, we see you and I see you and I am grateful. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, we throw it up once again. Um, this is where you can follow Amira Shabazz Bilal right on Facebook, this her name. And um, hit her up. You know, ask, you know, get a copy of her book, you know, hit her up on, you know, uh, Facebook Messenger. And, and so she could tell you how you can get a copy, a signed copy of her book. Yes. As authors, we look forward to that and appreciate that. Um, and, you know, instead of going to Amazon, her book is on Amazon, but, you know, take the you know middleman right out of it and go right to the author. Mm -hmm. um, because we, we love that support and um, we get paid more when you, when you come directly to it. We get paid more, we get paid more. And you know what, if I can give any advice to anybody out there, like, yeah, being paid is, is all of that. It's all of that, um, but you'll find you're gonna get paid when you just put a conscious, conscious effort to be great. And greatness is small and greatness is big. As long as you put the time and the effort in to, um, making it something worthwhile. Um, yeah. So that means anything that you see, any artist that you see on our platform, um, we're responsible for that. We'd like to pay people. We like, I mean, these artists work hard. We'd like to get to a place where when you when you appear virtually, just like when you feel, when you appear in, in a brick and mortar type situation, that there's an honorarium attached to um, being on this platform. Um, so that's what we're working towards. So don't think that if you donate that it's going into our pocket, we pay for this show, we pay for this platform. And most importantly, we like to pay our, our artists, the ones that appear here and the ones that you enjoy, hopefully. So yeah, a dollar, five dollars, whatever you got, we'll take it. Share it with your friends, all of that. Yeah, we know you enjoyed the show. I mean, mm -hmm. like this show, this was, I told you, I told you it was you know, the Avengers of poetry. <laughs> so we're working hard. We're working hard. We're going to bring some newness to this. Um, I hope you guys appreciated our, our opening. It's quite beautiful. Um, I hope you guys appreciated the fact that we're now offering you space. Um, you business, you you know, you have a business. You have something that you're selling. Uh, we, we're offering you commercial space here where you can have your product um, streamed live repetitively. So that means that you don't just get one shot. Uh, we're going to repeat um, showing what you're selling and hopefully networking with our audience so that you know you you're a winner if we're a winner and if we're all together we're all winners so let's support us support black businesses 
Let's go. Let's go. And we see already that the, the donations are coming in. I thank you. James thanks you. And um, yeah, that's what it's about. Indeed, indeed. For all of business, you can reach out to us um, at when people speak at gmail.com. It's definitely it's a low rate just to have your advertisement on our show and let people, let our audience see your business and let your business uh, be seen. So and, the, and the other thing I'm going to solicit for right now, while we're soliciting, um, I'm looking for female poets all the time. Um, one of the things about when women speak is we we have we have our following, we have our poets, we have our um, usual suspects, but we're always looking for new voices to showcase. So if you know of anybody out there, they could be a new poet, they could be an older poet, they could be somewhere in between. Um, shoot them my way if they're women and if they're men. Um, you can talk to James and I about this platform. Indeed, indeed. And I want to throw up one other thing. Um, you can, if you want to know what's going on in New Jersey as far as poetry or poetry workshop or poetry festival, uh, this is the site for you. I'm the founder of the site and I periodically update it with all the events and happenings. There's even videos on there too as well. Um, I'm actually, um, doing a poetry, a self-published, excuse me, a self-publishing workshop um, and is sponsored by um, and, uh, New Jersey Poetry Events and as well as my personal business, Not Enough Words, LLC. Um, so check, you know, check it out. Trust me, there's always something going on and that's mm -hmm. how you stay in the know. Yeah, I want to give a few shout outs. Shout out to Magali Words and her jewelry making oh, and, yeah. her, and her uh, her books. She's one of the uh, few people that come by all the time. She shares her beautiful work. Um, she sells jewelry. She also has some publications, some books that um, you can um, grab from her. Shout out to Enzima, um, Every Kind of Lady, um, Hartford's Lit. Um, that's another organization where you can um, check her out on Facebook. She's doing amazing things for women and writing and her writer's workshop. Um, she has a couple of coming up and I'm sorry that I didn't write it down to broadcast now, but um, thank you for your support in Zima. And I hope that this shout out helps your platform as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Indeed, indeed. support the artists, support the artists. Um, and that's her on Facebook. You can reach out to Zima right on Facebook. Um, and Zima Hutchins. So support, support. Um, we can go on and on, but it is getting kind of late. And as okay. you, said, you know, you don't got to go, but you got to get out of here. <laughs> but before you go, just know that we appreciate you and you have been tuned into all evening um, to our platform, James Ellaby and Amira Shabazz Bilal. When People Speak, March edition, celebrating women and women's history and i think that this was a fantastic show and a fantastic lineup and we'd like to thank you for appreciating us and joining us have a good evening have a good evening well um before we go i just want to say thank you amira for being our feature it was a pleasure finally featuring you i always wanted to feature you and i finally got to do it thank you to all the poets that shared um crystal letters Kylie mm -hmm. poet Macaulay Words, Paradise, Rescue Poetic, and Dewana, Dewana Sharice. Thank you all for making this phenomenal event. And see you last, always, the last Tuesdays of the month. Um, check us out. Trust me, it's going to be another powerful show. So see you then. And thank you, James, for being such a powerful, wonderful host. See you next time. <laughs> See you guys. Good evening. Bye-bye.